Hi, I'm Joe and this is Aerodite. Join me today as we fly between two uncontrolled airports in central New South Wales. Today we're going to be flying between the airports of Griffith and Cowra in central New South Wales. But before we get airborne, we're going to have a quick look over the aeroplane before taking her into the air. First thing I like to do is to remove all of the red stuff, so things like the exhaust bungs, I've already, re I've already removed the, uh, the mouth cover. The exhaust bung on the other side. Before removing the chocks, we're gonna check the landing gear actuators on all three legs for any signs of leakage or damage. Now that we've got the cowl open, we're gonna make sure the battery's reconnected. So that twists in here, like so. Cover plate goes back on. You can have a look at the oil, which is right on the top of the motor. Lifts up. I don't know if you can see there, but we're between down one and down two. So that's a good amount of oil for us. This here is the starter generator. And back here is the standby generator. The motor itself, the battery, and this tube, and this tube here belong to the bleed air system. They come across through the middle of the aircraft and uh, come into the ACM or the air cycle machine, which is a scaled down version of a pack that you'd find on an airliner, pressurization and air conditioning kit. And that goes to pressurization heating and uh, cooling the cabin. Next, we're gonna have a look at the hydraulic power pack for the landing gear. We're gonna make sure that there's enough fluid to safely extend and retract the gear. You can see the fact that there's fluid on that little step there, that we've got enough to safely conduct the flight. We're also gonna check the fluid in our braking reservoir here. Just a tight. There it is. Looks good. And just quickly double check that that oil filler cap is uh, closed securely before we proceed to uh, close the cowls and uh, shut up the motor for the flight. Okay, there's a tiny little hatch here under the nose of the aeroplane, open like so. And in here, we can actually check the status of the uh, fuel filter and see if it's gone into bypass or not. So you can see that round silver cap there. If the fuel filter was in bypass, an indicator would pop out of the top there, but I can see that the fuel filter's not in bypass, so we're good to go. Finally, let's make sure that the oxygen is indeed turned on. That's in the on position, and we have plenty of oxygen on the quantity indicator to safely complete the flight today. Finally, to shut the door, this little button on the stairs deploys a handle. They come up. We hold it in with this handle, and then I've got a push to close on the door here. I'm gonna push that. Down she comes. Handle comes down, and I want five green indicators. One, two, three, four, and five. The door's now secure. Okay, we're ready to roll now. Okay, we're setting 1900 RPM. Prop governor check, that passes. Set takeoff power. Takeoff power set, 60 knots, cross check. 80. Rotate. Okay, positive rate, brakes, gear, your damp, bleed, boom. Separator, pitching for 110 knots. No more than 120, I'm gonna keep it between 110 and 120. 
Okay, there's 1,000 feet above the aerodrome. Fuck up. Okay, we're now pitching for 160 knots. At which point I'm going to put the airplane into IAS mode with flight level 215 arm to start with. We'll go up to 235 if, uh, if that uh, works performance wise. I'm just going to engage the autopilot here. We'll pick a nice big hole in these fluffies to get through so we uh, maintain VFR. Okay, I'm just going to go into out hold for a second here and quickly run the after takeoff checks. Just going to set 80% power so we don't run away or do anything silly. After takeoff checks, your damp is engaged, inner source of radio is retracted, flaps are up, bleed is on, and the pressurisation is set. Taxi light can come off, we're going to leave the landings on until we uh, get to 10,000 feet above the aerodrome. Engine parameters and NG are all looking mighty fine and we're going to flight levels. So I'm going to set my altimeter to standard. Okay, I'm going to take the autopilot out because I want to climb in the gap between the clouds here. I'm going to come back to 100%. I'm actually going to take away the governor here. Set 110% power. Bring the ball in the trim with my feet. I'm going to do a little zoom climb to make sure we maintain VFR. So there's around 200 indicated. We're going to bring that right back to 140 at best guess, but uh, let's see where the uh, let's see where this leads. So we're in balance, all the perimeters, all our parameters, and the green. 21,500 is armed. Just going to clear this little fluffy, and then uh, we'll head on up. Okay, nice big hole here, maintaining VFR the whole way, and up we go. Okay, there's 4,000 feet per minute. Nice little zoomy boy there. Maintain the IAS of 140 knots. That should be enough just to get us above that cloud deck and it absolutely is. Outcome achieved. I'm gonna maintain a listening watch on Melbourne Centre here. Maybe let them know that we're kicking around. Pretty uh, busy air corridor between Cow and Griffith. All of the, uh, well, a lot of the flights to Adelaide and Perth actually pass over both of these waypoints on an airway. So, but uh, might be good airmanship just to let the centre controller, the on route centre controller, know that, uh, that that we're hanging around. I don't want to bust this cloud deck either, so we're going to do the same thing here. We'll come off into altitude mode in a second. I don't want to get too close to it. Here we go, come into our hold mode now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the power back to 100%. And I'm going to bring the torque governor back in the room by putting the aeroplane back into 700 mode. Being a TBN 850, I can turn the torque governor off with this switch down here. I'll show you later if, uh, if you 
you can't see it. And what that achieves is it just gives me a little more protection means that means I've got one more system in there watching my back. Okay. Let's go back up again. So this time we're going to put it in vertical speed mode. I'm just going to wind in 3,000 foot a minute. And then I'm going to stop the airspeed indicator with IAS mode as soon as the airspeed indicator here winds back to 160. And that way we'll maintain 160 knot climb, which is uh, performance-wise, it's, it's where this airplane is, is happiest. So I'm now going to reset the power. We're off the governor here. So I'm going to re-engage at 50 mode. What that allows me to do on this torque gauge is the torque needle can now move beyond 100% up to 121%. Now, I'm not really comfortable with 121% because I'm a bit of a chicken. So I normally set 115, that's kind of my personal minimal with it, because there's no torque governor. If I keep pushing this throttle forward, it's just going to keep going forward and, uh, and damage stuff. So waiting for that 160 knots, that's about to come in here. Waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. There it goes, IAS mode is now in the room. So we're now out of VS mode, into IAS mode, and you see the airplane pitch down a little bit. Now I'm going to pull us into heading mode, I'm just going to avoid the top of this cloud here, just to maintain our VFR. Let's make sure this is arm and 23.5. We can go up to 24.5 and still be in class echo airspace as VFR, we don't need a clearance to be in uh, class echo airspace. So, as this cloud deck is getting a little bit thicker, I just want to be safe and sorry, so I've uh, called up Melbourne Centre and I've activated the flight plan that we had in the system. We've upgraded to IFR, descended to the IFR flight level of flight level 230. And we're now tracking direct to Cara Sierra Juliet for the uh, RNAV approach into Cara itself. So, VFR departure and uh, IFR landing, so we've only got 40 miles to run. We're gonna go into v VNAV and have a look at Cara Sierra Juliet, and we wanna be 5,100, correction, 5,200 at Sierra Juliet, and we wanna start at, we wanna be there three miles ahead. So what we're gonna do is we're clear to leave control area descending, and uh, we're gonna come down to uh, 5,200 5,200, we're going to arm that. We're going to go into indicated airspeed mode and we're going to pull throttle off back into 700 mode to put that governor back in place. And then as we uh, come over the top here, okay, before we decide to use these GPSs for any kind of hectic navigation. Let's check the RAIM. We can check it at Sierra Mark Mike for today at 0354. That time makes good sense in terms of my overhead time and the RAIM is available. Okay, we need to adjust this for our new course 083, 083, there it's set, flash is gone. And 5,200 armed. 26 is our required descent rate and we're descending at around 3,000 a minute, so that's that's a good place to be. Let's cross-check this with our grid life safe, 6,100. I might set 6,100 until we're within 25 miles of Cara, then that uh, MSA will apply there. Okay, let's run some descent checks too. Let's run the cabin down. Fuel elevation Cara is about 1,000 feet, so we set 1,000 plus 500 on the outer scale here. And descent. Pressure descent checks, pressurisation, that's now set. Flap lever is back in 700 mode. De-ice and inertial separator, we're below 200 knots so we can deploy the separator and we might have a bit of ice in these clouds, so it probably makes good sense to deploy that separator at this point. Fuel gauges, are beautifully symmetrical. Altimeters are gonna to go to 1014. Considering we are now cleared 
out of flight levels and uh, we have set an armed and altitude that is in altitudes, not flight levels. I'm going to go ahead and set 1014, which is a local QNH obtained by AWIS within 15 minutes. Inertial separator, that's associated. Okay, our RAM is checked. Our MDA is going to be 1500, so let's set the bug on the 5 there. With actual air drone QNH, let's have a look at our landing time, 9 minutes. And pull the prop back, press blade drag, and we'll pull the speed back too. That will flatten out our profile a little bit. Less induced drag on the wing means we'll go a little further with the energy we have. And the wonderful thing about this aircraft is that it's a, a jetliner when it's up at altitude, but when you're down in the weeds, it, uh, it handles like a light. You can put it exactly where you want to. It's light enough and manoeuvrable enough to, uh, to, to really make it move. It's really the best of both worlds with very little compromise in either. That makes it the, the perfect aircraft in a lot of respects like that. I think we're going to have some good cloud punching here. Still plus 7 degrees, so we never encountered that icing, but you know what? Better than being behind the 8 ball and needing to throw that separator, having to level off to get back to that 200 knots if you're on a rapid descent. Nice to be prepared. Okay, now within our MSA of Kara, so we can come down to 5,200, which is that uh, MSA, and then the uh, altitude at which we're going to join it, Sierra Juliet. And it's a continuous descent, so we need to be 4290 by Sierra India then. favourite part of any flight. In we go! Woo! Okay, I'm going to find the prop up now. I'm going to bring in a bit of power. To set 60%. It's a pretty safe place for this aeroplane. So there's our 5200. Sitting on MSA there at a QNH of 1014, which is the correct QNH. Okay, round the corner we go. We're going to come down to 4300. Going to arm that, and then we're going to go down in VS. Go 1500 feet a minute, and that's going to mean a little dive and drive, but that's all right. Okay, looking for 4300 now. First here, India. Okay, coming into out capture there. We're going to engage that and then come down to a thousand minutes. There we go. Bring our heading bug round. 330. Beauty. There's a thousand to go. 2700 is armed. OK, 
Okay, let's go flaps 20 and gear down and speed checks. Okay, three green and no red. Gear is down and then flaps 20, 20 indicated. So I'm going to go visual procedures. Autopilot's going to come out. There's 2,700 Sierra Fox on the money. Okay, seven knots on the nose, right down the runway. There's no excuses for stuffing this up. Okay, final flap with landing checks. Gear, down three green, no red. Inertial separator is deployed and confirmed. Full, full flap. Your damps out and pressurisation bleed is off and that flash is associated. Landing checks complete. Okay, I've engaged my flight director into toga mode now, now so if I need to go around it's commanding a straight ahead pitch up and uh, get out of there confident that we're going to remain visual. There's a high enough cloud base that uh, we shouldn't have to execute the missed approach. We can just uh, join the traffic pattern and uh, have another stab at it. Okay, 500, stable. Three greens. No red. up as we got low, it's now up to 11 knots. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start rolling that trim back, start pulling the power back too. He's a big wing, so she takes a while to let go. And there we go, nicely down, onto the gate. the Folks, hope you enjoyed that uh, little hop, VFR departure, IFR arrival. Once more, thanks for flying with us. Catch you next time.